Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we're going to talk about God's faithfulness, His justice, His love, and how all of what He is about has a way of causing all sorts of issues for those who are wicked because people who don't like faithfulness, they don't like justice, they can't stand love, they're going to be at war with you. So we're keeping with this series where we are talking about the book of Psalm, talking about people who are against us as well as coming back to a full understanding in terms of the God that we serve, the one who put breath in our bodies, right? Knit us together in our mother's womb, who is there for us when parents have forsaken, as well as friends, relatives, anyone, come on. This same God who is all knowing, who knows where we are, ever present, and wants to have this relationship with us, Lord Jesus. We don't deserve a relationship with the Lord. Understand what I'm saying here. We don't, because we got our little thoughts, don't we? We have our little attitude problem every now and again. We tend to do some things that mothers and grandmothers and grandfathers, Lord Jesus, and dads have told us at times not to do. Some of you all, you remember, and that's why God is moving on so many people, places, and things to remind you of who you are, Lord Jesus, and why you need the Lord like never before. Hallelujah. Somebody just give God the honor and praise. Hallelujah. And this wasn't happenstance that you came across this message today. Lord Jesus, we have sinful hearts. We are doing things, like I said, thinking things, and God convicts us in so many different ways. And even though we have all of this foolishness at times, pent up, sometimes it explodes, <laughs> Lord Jesus, God still loves us until we get to a place where we just simply reject God all out. Mm. <laughs> and at that point, there is no heaven when God is speaking to us, when he is calling us. Many are called, chosen are few. So we still have breath in our body. We still have time to get it right. Hallelujah. And somebody, as I've said in other audio, you got more years behind you than in front of you. And so it's all the more important for you to get right with the Lord. Don't just be about it. Don't just, you know, talk, or I should say, don't just talk about it, but be about it, right? <laughs> so the saying goes, Psalm 36. I've given you enough time to pull that up for yourself. An oracle is within my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes. For in his own eyes, he flatters himself. Ooh, isn't that the society we're in? For in his own eyes, he flatters himself too much to detect or hate his sin. The words of his mouth are wicked and deceitful. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. Even on his bed, he plots evil. He commits himself to a sinful course and does not reject what is wrong. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your justice like the great deep. O Lord, you preserve both man and beast. How priceless is your unfailing love. Both high and low among men find refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Continue your love to those who know you, your righteousness to the upright in heart. May the foot of the proud not come against me, nor the hands of the wicked drive me away. 
See how the evildoers lie fallen, thrown down, not able to rise. Woo, Lord Jesus. Come on, I'm speaking to someone. I'm speaking to someone. There is someone around you, whether you know or don't know. I know some of us, I told you all, we went through our storms, our troubles, kicking off this spring season. And we are coming back to warn some of you all. Lord Jesus, there is this one who in his own eyes, he flatters himself too much to detect or hate his sin. Sir, there's something wrong. Ma'am, you need to stop. This is causing problems for everybody. I think of the young lady who it was going around on Twitter where she was on a plane and she was so upset about her own situation that she made her own situation be about everybody else and people <laughs> they weren't happy about that can i tell you that some folks you're dealing with stuff that you started and you want other people to co-sign and support i'm telling you right now that god's people they're not going to so for some of you all you're upset because you say the child of God should be in support of you should be honoring you should be speaking all sorts of positivity about you and instead that person goes about his or her day acting like you don't exist why oh why is this happening to me you see what goes around comes back around a long time ago some folks did some devious types of things a long time ago we saw some interesting things growing up controlling drunks oh lord jesus all sorts of men and being that this is the season of father's day i told you i was coming where some people were and i told you that i wasn't going to be in support of the toxic folk but rather be in support of the victim so if you are that one that wants to blame the victim for everything this message is not for you but for the one who you have been troubled on all sides, Lord Jesus, and you've had your share of issues with some of these men as well as women too. But remember the season, remember the season, God, he has his timing at which he speaks to some people. And since the Lord said that they want to be esteemed, how about we talk to them about the truth, the truth concerning their wickedness, their sin. Lord Jesus, there is no honor. There is no honor for some individuals. I know that's what they expected, but God says they don't honor me. Just as we talked about the women on this channel. And if those of you all who feel so moved to check out that, because see, I'm equal opportunity on this channel. And sometimes I can be a little tougher on the women than the men. But I will tell you this, that God is not pleased with many a man. Lord Jesus, I know that he thinks that he's good with God. I know that he thinks because he has a congregation that doesn't know him fully that he's all right. But the Lord says, oh, no, there is so much sin. It's so much to the point where the man knows it, but he dismisses it. OK, it's so much that he doesn't want to detect it and he doesn't want anybody else to detect it. Lord Jesus, he doesn't hate his sin. He doesn't come to a full repentance of his sin. He may confess it before the congregation, but when the congregation isn't looking, he goes right back to his wicked ways. Now, if the minister can do that, Lord Jesus, what do you think the worldly international national leader is doing and his minions? Lord Jesus, fathers, wicked, deceitful, teaching their children to be just as wicked and deceitful, if not more. Lord Jesus, he has ceased to be wise and to do good. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. That husband has ceased to be wise and to do good. That, oh Lord Jesus, that son has ceased to be wise and to do good. What do some of these Oh, Lord Jesus, powerful people, influencer, influencers, Lord Jesus, brothers, mm, Lord Jesus, in the brotherhood, what do they do on their bed? Knowing that they see death in front of them, plotting evil, Lord Jesus. I don't like the way this world is going. Before I leave this world, I'm going to make sure that we get a few more off this planet. Oh, I don't like this, he says. I'm going to make sure that we keep our foot on certain people's necks because we don't want them in our organization. Ah, 
I can't stand these people. And he has all sorts of names for all sorts of us. <laughs> okay. And he's got his recruits. Lord Jesus. Somebody say he's got his recruits. You know that. And those recruits are the ones that we fight up against. Yes, it is still a war between good and evil. It is still a war between elitist families. It is still a war between brotherhoods and sisterhoods. There is still a war between this lifestyle and that lifestyle. There is still wars. And the Lord says, I see these things. And this is why I'm calling your attention. Because once again, many are called, but chosen are few. You just happen to come across this message. You need to give God all the honor and all the praise because he is encouraging you to continue to fight the good fight, not the evil one, the good one. Even on his bed, this wicked man, oh Lord Jesus, I see one and I see two and I see three. These are foreign leaders. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Stay with me now because the prophetic is coming where some of you all are who are in powerful positions. Even on his bed, he plots evil. He maps out where he wants to start another issue, another problem, something dealing with fire. Mm -hmm. And then there's another something dealing with fire and another because he intends on doing so much before he checks out of here that he has earned his place in hell, Lord Jesus. He commits himself to a sinful course. See, it wasn't enough for some of these entities to buy up various media programming. And it wasn't enough for some of them to put some people in their pockets to spew all sorts of despicable things, unrighteous things, and to keep their hand on somebody's throat or their foot on somebody's back or neck. You see, these individuals have been approached by God's people. I see this in the spiritual realm, all sorts of light, all sorts of light, but godly light. And then of course, Satan brought about his false light. The false light, light does not reject what is wrong. The false light doesn't consider what is coming out of this man and many men wicked. The false light, matter of fact, encourages deep deceitfulness. And the false light will use a wayward in the faith, backsliding Christian to pose as one who is about us for us. Can I tell you, you need to mind who you're listening to. I don't care how many thousands and thousands. You need to mind who you are listening to. The Lord spoke to me about this a long time ago. He said that there are enemies of the faith, even though they pose as being legitimate, real, when in fact, no, they're fake, they're false. This is why I brought up in this series about the fake friends, because we have those that will deceive even the very elect. You were supposed to know that this one was nothing more than a disinformation agent. You were supposed to know that this one was nothing more than just causing all sorts of problems. Ah, you should have known. And sometimes they don't know because Satan has a force field, if you will, around some people where, no, you're not going to be able to discern unless God himself pulls off those blinders. This is why some of your relatives, for instance, why is she still in an abusive relationship? Why is this man still dealing with what he's dealing with at the workplace? Because until the blinders are removed off their eyes, they're going to continue to say that what you see isn't what you see and what you hear isn't what you hear. We have toxic people in the camp. Can I say that? They're at the workplace. They're sometimes visiting your home. There are those individuals who they haven't spoken to you in a long time, but God hears what they're saying and it's toxic. And so suddenly, oh, I don't understand why, why did this trouble come? Because you need to watch who you put your mouth on mm, in more ways than one. 
because we do have some of those who are wicked sexually immoral and then they want God to bless them God says stop praying to me because until you get your situation together that you have been so told based on the scriptures that you claim that you respect and that you're in support of you are just talking to the wind so that's why God's not answering my prayers says someone exactly and that's why he didn't answer father's prayers and he didn't answer grandfather's prayers and he didn't answer great grandfather's prayers I mean this is a generational situation here for some individuals if he was a thief and he recruited his son to be a thief therefore we have what <laughs> two thieves in the camp and then it continues on that is just a mere example but there are so many different things that people do all the while saying but lord where are you mm -hmm. the one who loves who can't get enough of god is the one that god is going to use you to speak a powerful message to your family to your friends to the workplace and yes you will end up losing just like on satan's side where there's a sacrifice of sorts where his children of darkness give up a lot in order to get some things done so too over here on god's side okay yes jesus ultimate sacrifice gave up so much but you think that you're gonna if you're gonna walk with the lord and still keep everything you are deceiving yourself if you think that you can walk with the lord and continue to do things that you've been doing for the past 5 10 15 plus years you are kidding yourself at some point those of us who've been walking with the lord for quite a while now <laughs> All the stuff that we lost, all the attitude that we got, all the dangling carrots over our head and them saying what we wasn't getting as if that was <laughs> Lord Jesus hurting us because God told us that these things were going to happen, but stay faithful, Lord Jesus. And justice is going to be served for those who have wronged us, Lord Jesus. See, God, he got plenty of time to make some things happen we don't have plenty of time but he does and just because we don't see things happening in our lifetime doesn't mean that it's not going to happen God has been long suffering in his way dealing with some of us watching us over the years being patient with us being considerate be oh Lord Jesus being wonderful in all his glory and all his ways. But there comes a point where God says, I've had enough. He walks away and he lets Satan have his way. The Lord says, some people are asking why too much. Why daddy, you wasn't there for me. Why daddy, didn't you do this, that, and the other? Why this and why that? The Lord says he knows your father. He knew that your father wasn't going to be too much to you other than what he wanted to be. But sometimes we've got to see what is ugly and wrong and unfair in order to appreciate what is beautiful, what is right, <laughs> what is just, what is fair. Hallelujah. And you appreciate your relationships a bit more. There's a father who appreciates his relationship with his children far more than his dad ever appreciated him. Matter of fact, his dad resented the fact that he was born. How many dads secretly resent the fact that they had children? I wasn't ready for this. Mm, you see, God knows their secrets. And so they put on a good act when the gifts come. This isn't really what I wanted yeah just like that child who brought you the gift wasn't really what you wanted oh did we go there yes we went there as my sons would say shots fired yeah because you see once again God knew just like he knew that there were mothers who really didn't want to be mothers and then there were of course those mothers who really wanted daughters or they really wanted sons and then there was the grandmothers who was enabling some things so too was the fathers who were talking all sorts of stuff negative stuff and the grandfathers talking about mm, too bad that wasn't a daughter too bad that wasn't a son Lord Jesus now you see why some people run to God like they do I gave you example after example, heartbroken, upset, rejected, 
despise. I need God, says someone. I need his love. Continue your love to those who know you, your righteousness to the upright in heart. Oh, heavenly father, may the foot of the proud not come against me, says someone. You see, because those proud individuals, when you start speaking truth, they want to come against you. They want to start finding fault with nitpicking. God knows all my faults. I don't need a mere mortal to keep telling me the same old, same old, same old argument, same old foolishness. Satan got them saying the same old, doing the same old, you know, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Come on. May the foot of the proud not come against me, nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. That's your prayer. Because you know, you know where the demonic so-called one but we know that god he doesn't just win he takes people out doesn't he we know that god doesn't just encourage and loves on us but he also protects us just like a parent when you're chosen lord jesus mm, lord jesus nothing happens unless god allows it to happen and then at that point Satan doesn't get any type of honor in that. No, it is God. Hallelujah. It is God. Because the wicked, according to my study Bible by Tyndale in the New International Version, you see, because the wicked have no fear of God, nothing restrains them from sinning. That's why they do what they do. You fear God, I don't, they say. See, that's over there. You you all into that word, not me. Okay. But that doesn't give you the right to keep on doing what you're doing. If you want some protection, I suggest you get into that word, confess your sin and repent. No, 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 I don't want to do that. Okay. So you want to go ahead on and torture and torment and disrespect and disregard and hold back front monies that you could be helping individuals. You want to do all of that. Yeah, it's my prerogative. I do what I want to do. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And that one who sang that song, notice all the trouble that came upon him. You still, you still want to say my prerogative? Mm, okay. See, there's a many of those children of darkness who sacrifice a lot because the organization called for it. Lord Jesus. What are you willing to give up to walk with the one true God? Jesus said, come follow me. Mm, Lord Jesus. So you got the wicked. See, this part of the message, we're understanding the wicked. See, in all thy getting, we get understanding, not just God's people and what God's people do and don't do to us or for us in support of us or against us. But we also... Get some understanding when it comes to the children of darkness. You got to know how to be that one who plays the game since you want to stay over there in that neck of the woods where the wickedness is. So what we know is that they don't have a fear of God. What we know is that they go ahead and they do some sinful things and then they act as if nothing's going to happen. They'll even say, ah, I'm going to go ahead on and do this. Nothing's going to happen. Then year two, year five, year seven, year nine, year 11, year 15, year 20, somebody is suffering the consequences, health ailments, a loved one passes away. They end up having their share of difficulty where that child that they brought into this world doesn't make them proud. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Lots of things that mess them up. God allows it though. God allows it. Because, hey, they want to deny. They want to blame. They want to shame. They want to come up with all sorts of things. Resist God. Resist the people of God when they speak wisdom. Okay. Can I tell you trouble's coming for some individuals? God is just and is only delaying their punishment. There will be punishment for that one who wanted to keep saying things that hurt you to your core. There will be punishment for that one that he's not saying anything. He's just playing the silent treatment because he's offended once again. 
We're not going to keep going around and around and around and around. At some point, that merry-go-round gets sickening, doesn't it? It used to be fun during the early dating season. It used to be fun for the kids when they were young. But daddy, we tired of your merry-go-round. Up the day like the horse and down and up and down and up and down. We sick of it. You up and down with this one and that one. Is there an off switch? How many kids do you have to keep bringing into the world that you don't want, that you don't care for, that you're just tolerating? I'm speaking for a daughter who's going through a whole lot right now. I'm not speaking for my dad. My dad over there in his house minding his own business. I'm speaking for somebody who's going through something right now. And they're saying, God, I need your help. I'm tired of this man hurting me like this. The wife who's yelling and cussing and fussing and slamming doors. I don't know why we do these things for this man. He don't love us. He don't care for us, Lord Jesus. You see, when you know that the demonic, the wicked, when you have an understanding as to why they do what they do, because they have no fear of God and that they don't think that what they're doing is sin. Understand this. This should keep you from sinning. Oh, son who learned from daddy. Uncle who learned from father. Cousin who learned from grandfather. Come on. The fear of God, Lord Jesus. It moves on a man, it moves on a woman to do the right thing. It's like that little kid, daddy coming, you better straighten up. That's one thing many a dad know how to do is put some fear in the household. You better straighten up. Cause you know when your daddy hit that door, he ain't gonna play with you boy, girl. Some of you all, you caught something on your backside for being disrespectful. Well, guess what? God considers us like children in his ass. And there are those who you're not going to get a butt whipping like a father doing that to his child. But you're going to get the kind of butt whooping that God knows your weaknesses and the very things that you admire and esteem and you love so much or the people. God has a way of taking them out of here prematurely or keeping them from coming to help you out, keeping them from doing what is right. And now you got to watch the wickedness upon them. Ooh, that's painful to see that you Got your act together and now you got to watch your child go through. Jesus help us all. Somebody fear God. That's why the old school said, I fear God. I know what God can do. Uh-huh, because that body count all around you. That's enough to shake anybody up. God will go so far as to even show some of us, hey, just want to let you know. Your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your niece, your nephew. They're checking out of here. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, you, you worry now, huh, you worry, you got a lot of things that you want to accomplish, you love them kids, you love that husband, you love a whole lot of people, don't you, uh-huh, understand who I am, says the Lord, that's why you supposed to put God on the throne, not people, mm -mm. not people, somebody, I see it in the spiritual realm, you're going to be headed to somebody's funeral, and I see another person, you're going to be headed over to the hospital, to see about yours and it's going to be repeated instances where you're going to be like i'm so sick of running to this hospital before god takes that person out another person i see in the spiritual realm your daughter your son giving you all sorts of grief and you've been praying asking the lord please have mercy you see and there are those who they want justice for their son and for their daughter and they're going to get justice may not be in their lifetime to see it but they're going to get justice and others it will be in your lifetime and you will see hallelujah hallelujah thank you oh heavenly father somebody's getting free out of a marriage too and somebody else is getting free from having somebody's baby now this is controversial but when god is in the plan we sit back and we be quiet on that. 
there were people in the in my family who over the years they lost children god said it's not time a cutting truth something that many of us what oh my goodness yeah sinful hearts of men and women producing and then god says i changed my mind and he can do that study bible says in contrast to evil people and their wicked plots that end in failure god is faithful righteous and just let me say that again in contrast to evil people and their wicked plots that end in failure god is faithful righteous and just when we take a look at verse 5 through 8 you can see both high and low among the men right the most important and the least important the rich and the poor the elite and the non-elite right God has a way of helping some folks out when they want to be helped. They can find refuge in the shadow of his wings. David tells us this. The psalmist David tells us this. You see, his love reaches to the heavens. His faithfulness reaches to the skies. His righteousness is as solid as mighty mountains and his judgments are as full of wisdom as the oceans with water, the great deep. (laughs) Hallelujah. This is why some individuals have these songs because God put them up to it. To show you how mighty he is. Look at those mountains a second, a third, a fourth time. And this time, look with the kind of eyes that admire a creator's work lord jesus hallelujah we need not fear evil people because we know god loves us he judges evil and will care for us throughout eternity hallelujah you see god always brings us back to something uplifting doesn't he he always reminds us that we still got time to get this thing right (laughs) there's a father who you still got time to get this right a stepfather a deacon a minister a lawyer a doctor lord jesus a man who's a sanitation worker oh lord jesus i'm seeing all sorts of men wearing all sorts of hats the delivery driver lord jesus the insurance sales agent speaking of They're ramping up for another wave of individuals to leave here prematurely. These people aren't just talking out here in mainstream media. They're not conspiracy theorists and just saying all sorts of foolishness. Uh Uh-uh. We even see that. Those of us who walk real close with the Lord, we see that too. I told you. There's some folks that's fed up with people doing some things out here in this world. And saying that, oh... Nobody can touch me and taking advantage of people, using and abusing. And God is allowing some things to happen once again. It was hard for us to swallow that pandemic and it's going to be even harder to deal with some of the other things. But yet we continue to press forward because we know that God has his reasons and so do men and women. Lord Jesus in powerful positions. Hallelujah. Glory be to the one true God. Hey, some of you all, you're getting just what you prayed for to take place. We can't get into all of the details because it would be too much for some individuals to wrap their head around. But God is a good God, isn't he? Hallelujah. I love him. I love him. Thank you, O Heavenly Father. Thank you, O Heavenly Father. Thank you. Come on, take that time out to praise him like never before because He could change his mind about allowing some things to happen. (laughs) Hallelujah. I know he's done that sort of thing in my lifetime. And he can do it for you. So press in. Worship him. Honor him. Give him all the praise. Take some of these psalm scriptures, right? And pray them back to the one true God. Lord, put love in my heart. Lord, I want to be faithful. Lord Jesus, protect me from the plots of evil. 
Lord Jesus. Guard my mouth from saying wicked and deceitful things. Lord Jesus, put a healthy fear in me concerning you. I don't want to be sinful. I don't want to have fellowship with the wicked. I denounce, I renounce all demonic entities, ties, associations. That's somebody's prayer. Hmm. Hallelujah. And yes, of course, when you deny, when you go against, there are consequences. We're well aware. We are well aware. Thank you, O Heavenly Father, for what you're about to do in this listener's life. To God be the glory. Please do check the description box for anything that is of interest. You've been listening to YouTube, Interim Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel and thanks in advance.